What's going on, guys? Graham Jesus and Matthews here with Bleach Report and Fan Sided Daily DDT and head of the Royal Rumble coming up on January 29th, Saturday, a rare rumble on a Saturday, Peacock 8 p.m. that day. We're talking with SmackDown superstar Seamus the Celtic Warrior, got every accolade under the sun, essentially, except for Intercontinental Champion. We'll talk about that soon enough. Seamus, what's going on, my man? How are you? Hey, bro. I'm just trying to stop the rumba and go. Did you hit that rumba? <laughs> it's about to start making them. I don't know where it went. Yeah. All right. Rumba's off. Crisis diverted. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Cool. Sorry. Go ahead, man. I apologize. No, you're good. You're good, brother. We're talking about the Royal Rumble here today. I'm super excited, but you've been the busy man. You've been a busy man lately, aside from just dealing with the Rumble right now, but you were at the Cowboys game the other day. I saw that you were at the NASCAR event just a couple of months ago. You're doing all this media stuff. Obviously, we're talking here today. I mean, obviously, but you've been in the business for a long time with WWE well over a decade at this point. How cool is it to be still doing this sort of stuff, promoting the Rumble, promoting WrestleMania? Again, being at the Cowboys game of the day, kind of a polarizing ending to that game. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah it's great. People got tired. It's in the Drew McIntyre tell the same story 600 times. You know what I mean? So they had to bring me in, to throw in a bit of charisma in there, you know? Uh, little Diggs, Drew are great, man. I love showing Little Diggs that Drew. But, um, uh, yeah, it's it's good. Like we went to the we went to the Cowboys game. That was awesome. Uh, I obviously do media this morning. I got a flight to do Connecticut tonight, and then I got to do the bump tomorrow morning, and some other interviews, and then I get back tomorrow night. And then Thursday morning we do a hype video, me and Drew for uh, the Titans, and then because they're in the playoffs, and then we have a Preds game, <laughs> the Preds appearance Jeez. on Thursday night. And then SmackDown, and then we have a couple of live events. But that's that's the fun part, you know what I mean? Like that. I think getting to go to these games and stuff. The Cowboys event was incredible. Like the whole setup was amazing. Um, obviously, we we're there for Mania, but you know, getting to actually when you're at Mania and stuff, it's just there's so much going on. It's very hard to relax. You're you know, thinking about the match and you're thinking about what's going on, and, and you know, it's it's just it's just rolling, rolling. You got loads of media appearances. So to go to the, the AT and T Stadium to watch the Cowboys. Um, it was it was it was really really cool to see the whole setup, even though they they didn't win. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a lot of upset Dallas Cowboy fans, but it was still a great experience. That's awesome. Yeah, again, talking it's about easy, WrestleMania as well. Say, what was that? Say, it's, it's, easy. it's fun and easy doing the current <laughs> stuff. You know, it's yeah. a lot of fun. No, I'm sure it seems like you guys are always doing new stuff every day, and especially for someone like you that's been around for a long time, still. Being able to do all this fun stuff, I'm sure, uh, doesn't get old to a certain extent. But not only just that, I mean, and talking about your longevity in WWE, it's been mentioned a few times on commentary, on the shows, Raw Talk, stuff like that, Talking Smack. It was 10 years ago this month that you won the Royal Rumble for the first time. As a fan for that's been watching for a long time, it doesn't feel like it's been a decade. Can you kind of reflect on that moment if it feels like it's been 10 years to you since you won the Rumble? Uh, it does. Sometimes it feels like more than 10 years and sometimes it feels like less i, I can't explain it like mm -hmm. how it worked but it was an incredible experience for me the rumble was one of my favorite pay-per-views the kid watched that uh, growing up and and you know i mean obviously we've had a lot of world champions and universal champions but very few people can say they have the honor of winning the royal rumble and for me to win that in 12 was incredible i know a lot of people were upset because a lot of people were hoping jericho was uh <laughs> was doing 12 probably even jericho himself but uh, but no, it was it was definitely it was definitely up there one of my uh, biggest achievements uh, in my career. And you know, I was lucky enough to be in there. You know, when me and Chris were in there, we had a lot of time, especially at the end, where we created a lot of you know there was a lot of like false eliminations between us. So that really gripped a lot of people. Uh, it was a lot of fun. So, something I won't forget. I was just telling someone earlier on that uh, the biggest thing about it was the morning of I woke up with a sty. So my eye was down like this. So the, the hard, first four hours of the road, I was like running around with a hot rag trying to burst this die. I think to myself, I'm about to win the Royal Rumble. Probably, you know, the biggest thing I've done in WWE. And, and my eye, I can barely, barely see out of my left eye or right eye. I couldn't remember, which, can't remember which one it was because I had a sty in it. I was like, this is just, this is, this is my life to a T. <laughs> no, that's perfect. I think this year's Rumble, because the way that it falls, I think it is the actual 10 year anniversary of when you it won is. the Rumble on that Saturday, which is super cool. So obviously so much has changed in the last decade, everything you've accomplished since then, multi-time WWE world champion. You've talked about it a lot. Obviously I know you, when they were asking for questions for the bump on Wednesday, you only wanted intercontinental championship related questions. 
so much has changed in the last year that is the one title that has essentially eluded you up to this point. Is there a way where if you can win the Rumble this year, you can go for the Intercontinental Championship instead? Is that something we can make happen? I think it's a bad idea. That's a great idea. I was just thinking about that <laughs> the other day, you know? I mean, like, listen, it's the last title that needs to become an ultimate Grand Slam champion. Um, when I was on SmackDown during the, uh, the Thunderdome era, um, it eluded me. Then I went to Raw and then we're separated again. And then, you know, now I'm back on SmackDown and we had that like gauntlet match that Sami Zayn won. So I just feel like it's just like it's that last thing you need. And it just seems to be the hardest thing to get, you know, which is kind of incredible if you think of everything I've won. And over my career, it's that the one title that I just haven't been able to get my hands on. But that's that's what I want, that's what I need from the first ever Ultimate Grand Slam champion to completely cement my legacy for everything I've won. And it's got a spot upstairs in my office right on my shelf where it's 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 gonna go when i get it but it's just it's just that thing mate you know what i mean it's just like i think it's like when you have a bingo or whatever it is i'm just doing some kind of analogies here and you have your whole car and you're waiting on that note you have you lash all the numbers out of it they all come out in a row you're like look at every number i'm gonna blast for this and then the last number is the very last number they draw you know what i mean and mm-hmm. that's how perfect it could be but um no i i haven't i haven't lost sight of it so i still uh I still, uh, I'll do anything I can to, to get my hands on that before my career, before the curtains come down on my career. Do you have a spot in your office as well for the Universal Championship, or is that as, not as much of a priority? Uh, I mean, I have to <laughs> have you, if you know what I mean. I'm not yeah. going to say, oh, I'm not going to, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to sniff at it, you know what I mean? Or I'm not going to, like, you know, take an opportunity. Of course I will, you know, of course. But I just, it's, it's one goal at a time, you know, Graham, and that's, that title for me is is to me right now is is worth more than the universal title. If and when you win the Intercontinental Championship, is it true you would want when, to make the strap when when, when when you win the Intercontinental Championship? Is it true you would want to make the strap green, as you said on Twitter recently? Yeah, of course. I also love the old school one, not the white strap thing that was brought back, mm-hmm. but the original one that Savage wore and Steamboat yep. wore. Bret Hart, you know what I mean? I think that's just an iconic and classic title. I understand the way WWE want to keep changing the looks of the title and keep them fresh, but I still think there's a lot of there's a lot of room for nostalgia and a lot of room for a classic look and a classic title. And I feel like that that title, especially the one the, the Winged Eagle, I feel like those two titles, especially, are timeless. They're yeah. classic. And if they brought them back, that that version, I just I think a lot of people will be happy with it. You know. I think yeah. especially a lot of the talent, you know, because that's uh, maybe I'm just being nostalgic too, mate, because I grew up with those titles, you know what I mean? And that's really how I would get introduced to WWE. But I still feel like it, it would be cool to bring them back. I mean, it's possible. I mean, the classic white strap was brought back after like a decade long hiatus or whatever, a long time ago. And obviously that was retired a few years ago. But I mean, it's possible. It's, it's been shown that it's been done. So it definitely yeah. is doable. I mean, when you when you find out you go to SmackDown in the draft, you talked a little bit about it before, but when you find out that you're headed back to SmackDown in the most recent draft, is that something you're pulling for? Like, listen, I need to go to SmackDown so I can win this championship. Are you hoping the Intercontinental Champion comes to Raw? Like, what's your reaction or going into the draft? Honestly, I was just following where that was going to go. That's what <laughs> I was doing. Because I wasn't sure if Damo was going to go to SmackDown because he was a U.S. champ and then uh, Shin was going to go over to Raw, you know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah. Like so, yeah. It's it, everything based around what brand I was going going to uh, was based on where that title was going to end up. Yeah, it, you know, SmackDown and Raw are two different shows. I mean, the extra hour on Raw definitely makes a huge difference. Mm-hmm. I think that I've, you know, but you know, I got great opportunities on Raw. Like I started the shamey character stuff, the hats, you know, the the jack and everything, and the. I was so much, so so much looser in my promos, and that's really where I've started to come into my own and just just be me and stop pretending to be someone else. And, and you know, and I had a great start in SmackDown. Obviously, went through the, uh, with Big E and Jeff and everything, and then you know, we got to Raw, and then I got a lot more opportunity, at longer matches, which definitely helped remind people who Sheamus is and what Sheamus can do. So. On this aspect of that, there's, there's pros and cons for as a talent on, on both shows, you know what I mean? But yeah, for me, it was it was definitely, I was like, just watching, like, it's like watching the stocks, mate. Where's that going? Is it going up? Is it going over there? Is it going over there? Because then when I found out I was going to be on the same show, I was, I was like, all right, here we go. This is it. Roll yeah. up the sleep. Let's get after that. 
Yeah, and that's exactly where you're right now. So hopefully that is something that happens at some point. But you mentioned it right there and you've talked about it before. Banger after banger after banger. I mean, obviously you've had a lot of great matches over the course of your career, but it really does date back to like 2020, as you mentioned, like the feud with Big E, some of the matches you were having with Chad Gable at the Rumble two years ago yeah. as well um, over the last couple of years. Do you have one? Fun. That was the biggest disappointment for me for the brain too as well. Like uh, I'm watching what Chad's doing now and Chad's a phenomenal wrestler, mate. I mean, uh, you know, this Shorty G character, you know, just wasn't who he was. You know, it, it just didn't, it didn't work. Um, I'm glad he got another boy to cherry, you know what I mean? I know obviously but it's with Otis too, like, so and they're, they're best of mates for years. But, you know, going out there, after coming back from all that time off and then you know, in the pre-show and in a, in a, in a match with Gable, uh, where there wasn't even that many fans there because there was some issue with tickets. Like that was that was a low point. That was another low point for me. But again, these low points are what kind of spur me on to kind of put things right and they, they motivate me. I don't let them get to me like, oh, I don't feel sorry for myself. Yeah. I never let that. I just basically, that, that really lit a fire under my ass. And again, it wasn't long after that that, you know, obviously we went into the, the performance center because of COVID. So I still had that in the back of my mind. Mm-hmm. And I, that as as motivation just every week to show people remind people and uh, for me going in the pc it was like i had this mentality where like like you know i'm just gonna go out there like nobody knows who i am i'm just gonna go out there and just start all over again and just just you know show people that you know who shame this is and, and, and that's what i did like if you go out there with a mindset to give one nothing and then you're starting scratch then that'll, that'll keep you motivated more than anything the idea of going out there that you're over and that you're like, oh, I've done it all, and this and mm-hmm. that. that. I think that's a that's a, that's a career killer for people because when you go out that mindset, they, that what's the point? Like, what's what's your motivation to get out there? Is it is it it's just is it money? Is it just you know for TV time or yeah? Like that's I, I really feel like that is the biggest career killer. If you go out there every week, like nobody knows who the, who you are, and or that you have achieved absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. It just keeps you, it keeps you driven. It keeps you fresh. It keeps you motivated. It keeps you hungry. And that's something I've instilled in my head, like, uh, for years. And, uh, you know, especially the stuff I do with Cesaro and the bar and everything. And coming back with the Mohawk and 15 before that. And it's just like all these things. It's like, just staying motivated, staying hungry. That's the key, mm-hmm. you know, you need to keep, to keep moving on with your career and keep being successful. And with that drive, I mean, like, it was there. Like, does that make sense? No, no, that makes sense. No, absolutely. And I mean, kind of going off that, was there any one match you had during that period? I mean, you kind of go into it, so to speak, and if I'm wrong, correct me, with like a chip on your shoulder type of thing, continuing to prove yourself, even though you've been here for well over 10 years and all the accomplishments you've had, you have that motivation. Was there any one match? And I guess the Drew one might be the obvious answer from Fastlane, because that was a great match, um, you know, on the personal level as well, that you come out of it and you feel, all right, this is what I wanted to prove to people. This is the Seamus of all, the Seamus of now, um, that you really came out of it having that great feeling. I, I, I feel like it was this, this street fight or false count anywhere um, with Big E. I think it was false count anywhere with Big E. That yep. was the one. Like, I'd done some stuff with Jeff. I mean, I mean you know, it was, it was awesome. We had the pay-per-view match in the street. The, the bar fight was great as well. Mm-hmm. That was another one. Um, and most of these matches, like... I came out on the losing end, you know what I mean? So, you know, I, I think most of the matches of my career, my favorite ones are, you know, are the ones that I haven't won anything. You know, that one that came out on the, on the, with an L. But um, the one with Big E really was because, like, I brought something out of Big E. Like, Big E is so much personality. So He's just always having the crack, always having the laugh. He's always up for fun. And, like, you know, he's, like, rolling around the ring when he comes in. But uh, it was it was a scrap it was a it was a fight for our lives. The two of us going everywhere in that place. I mean, he hit me over. To, he hit me across the back of the neck with, with a broom. Mm-hmm. Um, not not just picked it. Wasn't gimmicked. It wasn't like whatever they say. Yeah. He just full wax smashed a broom over the back of the neck. And I remember going, Jesus! All right, here we go. You know what I mean? It's like, but um, but yeah, I just that to me that was the one because everything else after that was violent and rough as it always is. But that that just I think that one itself reminded people like, all right, you know, when you're in there with shame, oh shit's on. You know what I mean? It's yeah. it's about to get real. And uh, um, every again, another thing was everyone saw a more aggressive, vicious side to, to E than we've seen in the past. That he was fired up, you know, and that was for me on both sides of that. That was uh, that was that was a huge success. 
And the cool thing about that match too. No, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the cool thing about that match was that I think people kind of saw that as a stepping stone for a big E, like, oh, on to bigger and better things. But you yourself also use that as a platform again to go on, as you said, go on to Raw and have amazing matches over there, vie for the championship, feud with Drew, everything they mentioned before. So it was really mutually beneficial for both of you guys. And uh, as we wind down here, last question for you, kind of going off what you mentioned earlier, coming back in 2020, the feud with Chad, or at that point, Shorty G, I guess, um, and kind of reinventing yourself again, bringing back the classic Seamus look. I know you've talked about this on the bump before. You probably get it a lot. Any update in the last two years on getting written in your face back as a theme song? I know Jeff got his song for a little while. Any update on that, or have you just kind of given up on it? I haven't given up on it. I haven't given up on it. It's still there. Uh, Just when I came back, I really wanted to bring that song back, and it was shot down. Vince Vince hates it. Uh, Some other people didn't like it or didn't agree, but uh, it's it's very nostalgic. It's very, and I haven't given up on it. I guarantee I will get that song back. I just don't know when, or nobody's not going to know when, but. I will, I will, I will get a chance to bring it back. But I mean, it's for me when I, that when that music hits, there's a lot of like nostalgia and stuff, and, and a lot of you know memories of, of great wins. You know what I mean? Like like ten years ago when I won the Rumble in St. Louis on the 29th, that was the music that played in the arena. You know what I mean? After after uh, after I won the Rumble, so I haven't given up on it. It's just it's a bit of a strategic measure going on right now, and when I can get that back. I think I don't I don't think we've heard the last of it in your face. You got to strike when the iron is hot and you also got to wait for when fans least expect it because that's when it's going to mean the most. And you're going to get the biggest reaction for when it happens. You know? Yeah, we, we, Graham, we give things away too much. You know, someone asked me earlier on there and uh, if you ask me about like the rumble and all these inside things, I'm like, dude, like, you know, you just enjoy what it is. Enjoy the pay-per-view, like just enjoy, you know, like, Numbers and stuff, yeah, but you know, everyone knows what number they are for the Rumble. But just, just enjoy it, mate. Don't always try and like, you know, look behind the curtain or break the egg. I just, it just, I know everyone's always looking for information and looking for knowledge and looking for to know what's going on. But like, there is a lot to be said about you know keeping the magic under wraps and and, and finding out as you watch it. I think we just, it's like looking like fuck like two weeks before Christmas and going in and open all the presents. You know what I mean? And then wrapping yep. it up again what you got you know it's like where is where's the crack in that where's spontaneity in that you know what i mean where's where's the fun in that and i just think a lot of we, we spoil things for ourselves too much because we need to know right now just, just you know i think the most important thing is to enjoy it and see what happens and never know what's coming next you know because that's mm-hmm. that's what, when i was a kid that's what you know there was you know there was no you know no internet and stuff so there was no information getting really out there until it happened you know once it happened then you knew what was going on and uh, yeah, I just feel like there's, there's a lot to be said about not knowing what's coming next. And I think for fans too, it's exciting and it makes it even more exciting. And the Rumble itself is one of the most exciting pay-per-views we have because people can like uh, draw numbers and who their, their guy is. It's a lot of fun, even for people who you know aren't hardcore wrestling fans or don't watch every week, but yeah. they tune in at WrestleMania season, they tune in at the Rumble and they have all their mates over. And it's a good crack. It's a good get together. You know what I'm saying? And they all have the crack and they don't know who they're getting. They don't know what number it is, but they might win the pot at the end or whatever it is, you know? So that, that, that sort of magic definitely is, it, you know, I, I, I do love that aspect about what we do, just keeping stuff under wraps. So, yeah, absolutely. That's what the rumble's all about. It's all about those surprises. We're going to get those surprises Saturday, January 29th on Peacock at 8 PM. It's going to be yeah. great. Seamus. People look forward to you being in the match 10 year anniversary again of when you won the match. I mean, I don't know if that'd be much of a surprise if you want. I mean, we talk about surprises because we're expecting right now, but we look forward to it. Seamus, this has been such a pleasure. Great to finally chat with you. I talked at the SummerSlam press thing uh, back in Vegas or whenever it was. Yeah, my, yeah. Yeah, my girlfriend's brother was a big fan. And I, I mentioned that they had the redhead connection thing, and he was really happy to find out that I was talking to you here today, too. So uh, very much enjoyed this, Seamus. This has been a blast. Oh. I thank you for your time. Thanks, Graham. Also, I'm a, I'm a proud dog dad of four rescue dogs. So for anyone out there who's looking to, you know what I mean, who's missing some of their lives, I'm telling you right now, a dog will fill any void that you have, mate. I, I'm always for, like, any dog I love, it doesn't matter, but I'm all, I am a big fan of adopting, you know, adopt dog shop, you know what I mean? And I work with the NHA here. I'm not saying that. Any, every dog is amazing. Every dog is special. Yeah, but uh, 
I have it basically, you know. So if you guys, anyone out there who's looking for that, missing that void in their lives, you know what I mean? Definitely try their, their local uh, uh, humane association or stuff like that. It'll change your life. I was told I can't have any more than four dogs. So it is a bit cool. Yeah, I think we've got a whole army of them right now, mate. So, but that's just, I just throwing that in as a tidbit for people. No, dogs absolutely. Are, I'm, short cats, I've, by the way. Oh, cats. Yeah, and no, I'm glad you said that. It's so funny. My girlfriend has six dogs. They actually just got a new dog the other day. They got a basset hound. So she's going to love to hear oh, that. So. We have a basset hound beagle mix. Um, so we have right here, his name is Frodo. He's got like short legs and big feet. So he looks like a hobbit, you know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah, and Drew, Drew McIntyre has got two cats, two rescue cats as well. So yeah, yeah we're like dogs and cats. It doesn't really matter. They're, they're, they're both amazing. Anyway, just, I just trotted in there, you know what I mean? Somewhere in me, I'm probably wearing me a top t-shirt today, you know? That's perfect. And what was the website again, you said? Oh, for, for us, it's the Nashville Humane Association for people living in Nashville. Oh, okay. Um, Humane associations in every city. In Tampa, there's one there, amazing one as well. We used to live in Tampa for 10 years, all across the country, you know what I mean? So I'm just saying, for a lot of people who think there's this something, they feel there's something missing in their life, so tell you, a dog or a cat will change you for them. They'll fill any void, mate. So just off the cuff there, you know what I mean, Grandma? But anyway, I just want to throw it out. Yeah, absolutely. No, I can attest to that. But, Seamus, this has been yeah. great, man. Thanks again for your time. I appreciate it. At least it's not buy me bleed t shirt or buy me protein powder. <laughs> It's none of that stuff, you know. It's, I'm not making money off that, you know. It's like, oh, boy, my name's whatever. No, it's just like, you know, get down to your bleeding local humane associations and uh, and see some great dogs and cats. I think we can all appreciate that's a great message to send and a great note to end on. Again, man, thanks so much. I appreciate it. Thanks, Graham. I appreciate your time, fella. Have a good one.